You know, I don't think I can believe it either. One year ago to this day, on the exact second I am recording this, Mount Unblade 2 Bannerlord was released into early access, being one of the biggest releases of 2020 and still staying right at the top with one of the most successful game launches of all time on Steam. But one year on, what has happened? How was the initial reaction when it released? What about the patches, the mods that have come out since then? And where is the game going to go into the future? Well, without further ado, Let's talk about Mount Unblade 2 Bannerlord one year later. On the 30th of March 2020, Tailwoods released Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord onto Steam into Early Access. It wasn't the first time people had played it. We got a beta that ran for a few months, but this was mostly showing the multiplayer. Looking into some of the skirmish modes, the team deathmatch, and of course the long-awaited captain mode, which was very well received. However, multiplayer was never really the biggest selling point for Bannerlord. It was a great factor, and especially when the Napoleonic Wars DLC came out for Warband, it blew up with all these clans and community events. But I think the majority of people were waiting for Bannerlord single player and we finally got our hands on it on the 30th of March. Upon its initial release the reactions were out of control and this wasn't always positive. There were so many negative responses to do with crashing, glitching, bugs, sometimes it was even unplayable. I remember for a few days my Bannerlord wouldn't even work. I'd just try and load it up and it would crash every single time. Of course these are things that were later patched out and fixed but the amount of bugs were immense. One of the first things that I noticed when I was actually live streaming on the release of Bannerlord was trying to get into Bandit Camp. It's one of the mainstays of your beginning game in the Mountain Blade franchise, but every time you try and attack a bandit camp, the game would crash. Every time you try and go into a trader, the game would crash. And this was a never-ending cycle of bugs and glitching, and yes, it did have some negative responses for that. But Tailworld's gone onto their computers for day and night for weeks on end. They were patching, fixing, and responding to all the criticism and comments that they've had from their game. But overall, the response was positive. Yes, of course, there were people angry at all the bugs and glitches, but you can expect this from any game in a especially one launching into early access. The majority of people were blown away by this game. Mountain Blade Warband was pretty small. It started off as a passion project in Warrider by Armageddon and his wife. They slowly built up this community, releasing Mountain Blade in 2008, Mountain Blade Warband in 2010, the Napoleonic Wars DLC in 2012, and finally when it came to Bannerlord, eight years after its initial announcement, it released as if it was a full AAA game. Seeing the growth of this franchise from the beginning made it something special. To see almost this fully fledged mainstream game from a game series that I'd always looked at as a small indie project. It was the most successful 2020 release at the time on Steam and it's still up there in the top releases of all time on the PC platform. It got onto the 5th, the 4th, the 3rd most played games on Steam with over 240,000 concurrent players at times. It's estimated that Battleworld has now sold over 5 million copies which for a game and a development team of the size is almost unheard of. So we get it. People love this game at the start. But as Tailworlds released more and more patches, more and more content updates, and especially more and more fixes for all the complaints, the player base only rose. The YouTube scene for this game at the time was something that I haven't seen before, especially as it was a project that I'd been following since its early days of its dev blogs in 2015, 2016, and then seeing all the YouTubers that I'd grown up watching, that I loved watching on a daily basis, picking it up and showing it on their channels, it was something that I could only have dreamed of. And with this grown community came, of course, the first mods. Modifications were one of the biggest things that made Mountain Blade Warband the size it was even back in the day. I mean, Warband still gets thousands of players on it every single night, and this is mostly down to the mods. Whether it's taking you into Middle Earth, the Star Wars franchise, even back into Rome, we knew that modding was going to be massive in Battlelord, and it was only a matter of time. Modding tours were announced to be coming later on down the line, but people didn't want that to stop them. The first mods came out before any sort of help was given from Tailworlds. The first one I covered was voice controlled armies where you could plug your mic in and you can start commanding your troops on the battlefield using only your voice. The decapitation mod was a lot of fun, slicing and slashing off the heads and limbs of all your enemies, Spartans coming in as one of the first retextures as a troop, and of course Karadia Awakens, still being one of the biggest mods in the game and taking you into every single fantasy era or time period that you can think of. I think for a lot of people the multiplayer for Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord was somewhat abandoned at the start. I mean it was a massive part of Warband with the 
the community events and live battles going on every single night, and they still happen. However, through its release and a few months after the initial early access came out, we got some cool multiplayer additions, with clans that you're able to create within the game, inviting people, and then eventually going into clan battles with each other. It's still very much primitive and nothing like the private servers and community hosted stuff we got in Warband, but it was a start, and it was a good sign of things to come. But finally, those long-awaited modding tools were released in their beta stages. This gave the community developers so much more freedom with what they can put in the game. I know even now people are still complaining that there isn't enough freedom for mod developers, yet this was still something. Through it, we got one of the mods that was based off Caradio Awakens. They saw the Romans in that modification and thought, hey, I could take them and do something with it. And then we got Eagle Rising, the best overhaul for Mountain Blade I have ever seen. The Roman Lorca Segmentata, the Lorca Hermata, the Archers, the Cavalry, they look beautiful. It's so immersive going into battle with your legionaries, especially when you have 100, 200, 300, even a thousand troops on the battlefield at the same time. As someone who loves the time period of ancient Rome, this was perfect. They even have plans in the future to move this to potentially going into multiplayer as well, so we can get the recreated shield battles and community events that we got in mods like Mountain Gladius and March of Rome back in Warband. Then we got one of the most game-changing mods ever to come to the game. This was Bannerlord online. A few weeks ago, it came out of absolutely nowhere, taking a game that people mostly didn't care about the multiplayer for, and somehow created a full MMO inside the game. People could join to a server of up to 1,500 players at the same time, walk around the single player map doing missions, farming for gold, taking cargo from one city to another, even entering arenas with all the other players that were in that game at the same time. Battlelord Online took everybody by storm, and it is going from strength to strength, with new traders being added in, with new additions and quests that you can now do. In the future, we're going to be seeing some clans where you can join together with friends, having your banner and your name over your squad's head when you're moving around the map, and then going and taking castles off other clans or even the AI, using your troops and commanding them in massive sieges. I think Bannerlord Online has shown people that even without full modding tools, these developers are doing something different. They're going to be pushing Bannerlord to the next level, and I can't wait to see what comes out from that. But this year has come a long way. Even if you look back now, in just the 12 months since the first release in the state the game was in at that point, to where it is at this current moment in time. I think it's become a meme at this point. People saying we waited 8 years for this, but if anyone knows the actual development of the game, that's entirely not true. However, what we have had in the last year, where we can actually see the roadmap of development that Tales have brought out, I can't fault them, especially in the way they've handled the single player. I know there are issues with the mod developers writing long lists of things that they need for Tales to release in order for them to continue their mods, but as talking from just a consumer, as someone that just plays the single player and even without mods a lot of the time, a lot of the additions that have come in have been great. They've listened to the criticism, they've listened to the issues that people have had, and they've sorted them. Now the game isn't even out of early access yet, so it has a long, long way to go. There are still things I love, especially in the multiplayer, having in private servers, that we can then eventually get mods within the multiplayer to implement admin controls so people can set up their own trainings or community events or even even start making maps and put them within multiplayer themselves. But seeing as we've not even got the full release of the game yet, I think there is a lot more to come. But what do you think's next for Mountain Blade 2 Bandlord? Do you think they're fine continuing the way they're going, or do you have some specific things that you'd love them to implement throughout the game? I will make a video in the future talking about the mod developers and the complaints that they've had throughout Tale Wars and the last year of its release. And whilst I'm incredibly thankful that Tale Wars released this game in early access, I think it also hurt it a little bit, where people expected a full game and yes, whilst you plaster early access across it as much as you want, because it's been so long, people have been judging it as a full release game. Whether that's fair or not, that's just the consequences that has come with being in early access for so long. But please, leave your comments down below. I'd love to know what you think. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. But until then, I will see you in the next one.